Howdy folks, we've got another kit for you today. It's from Emaha, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Mark A Whippet is a World War II medium tank, 1918, 135 scale. Um, it's quite an old kit. Um, it's a British made company. They, I uh, think, my understanding, were the first to start making World War I tanks. Uh, models um, kit number is e -A -E -M, sorry 4003 um, you get some options you've got a German one on the side which probably would have been a captured one um, all of this not really a great deal so look what we get in the box so open in top box. You get a uh, decal sheet which is inside and your basic instructions. You get these weird flexi rubber kind of tracks. You get two pieces. One giant sprue of parts, two sprue of parts, and this one contains the uh, guns and wheels and stuff. And so you get these uh, weird. Flexi rubber tracks, got a nice detail on them. Um, not sure if they're going to take a wash and paint and everything because they're going to need to be weathered up and stuff. I hope they do. Um, they've got these pins, let's take these off because they're going to need a little bit of clean up anyway. They will lock into there. Um, don't know how you're going to glue them in or anything. I probably will put a bit of glue in there and probably a staple in the inside to uh, hold them in place. It's nice they got a bit of flex on them because they're going to need to bend around the tank. Have this sprue piece, it contains the side of the whippet. Um, it's a quite thick, heavy plastic they've used. Um, completely covered in rivets. Not sure if those rivets are uh, too big for this scale, but I'm not bothered about small details like that. I know some people can be, but I, it doesn't bother me. There's the top of the um, part of the tank. I think that's part of the engine cover. You've got these two sides of, of the whippet. And then you've got these other two sides. Um, there's another piece. Jetra pins on the inside. All the numbers are got on the actual pieces themselves. So you may need to take care of them just in case you might see them. Got a little bit of clean up. It's fine. Doesn't seem any flash. Um, and there's no um, sink marks and stuff. Because it's quite a thick plastic, so hopefully, um, normal styrene blue is going to work. Hopefully, there's the uh, lower hole at the bottom of the tank, some side pieces, there's another side of the uh, whippet, these two pieces as well on the side of the tank, I believe, some more sides. There's one of the sponsons. The machine guns will pop out of this. <clears throat> You've got this sprue here. It contains the uh, drive wheels and road wheels. If they are called road wheels on, on a World War One tank, I'm not sure. The um, machine guns. I'm not sure which ones they are. There's two types. 
they used. I know that. I know that um, these fine detail parts. These could be idle idler wheels, maybe. Um, exhaust pieces. I don't think the whippet had a uh, actual gun like a uh, normal tank does. I think it was just machine guns. Um, would be totally wrong but I didn't see a main gun here's the instructions guys we have a look at this quick variable languages in Dutch French English and whatever that is uh, information on the kit and whip it and stuff uh, The decals are quite old. They, the white has got a bit of yellowing into it now. Certainly not white as they should be, unless they, uh, unless it was an off-white. But on real, the real tank I've seen, it, they it's actually quite white, white. So I won't be using these. I'm going to paint these these stripes on because they're easy to do anyway. Um, but I will need this cross. I will need this and some of these serial numbers. But the carrier film is quite chunky, so I'm going to have, going to have to cut it really, really close. So I've got less carrier film. The uh, decals are really flat. Um, your first step is working with the wheels. Two sets of two, obviously because it's left and right, and then... 10 pieces of little ones, just so they bobby our idler wheels and then putting the tank together, so the bottom part, side walls, back of the tank, front of the tank the ball gun, machine gun going in probably be easier to build the whole tire tank as one giant piece um, and then to paint it afterwards you've got probably the front of the tank which is a uh, triangle piece I'm asking you to put the tracks together, obviously two sides um, more of the top part of the tank covers more machine guns going in um, then you've got that triangle piece going on exhaust another machine gun going in then dropping the side skirts on um, <clears throat> and obviously the tracks will go on and then you've got your paint option or scheme it's not in colour unfortunately because it's an old kit it's black and white um, so this is a bit of the discussion because um, a lot of people would say it's one colour or it's this colour um, what the true colours were during World War One. Um, down here they, they've given you FS16118 I've tried to look that up uh, on Google and it doesn't come up with anything so whatever colour that is I, I, I don't know what that colour is um, but everyone else has done it like a olive green not olive green uh, khaki green or a muddy brown green colour so um, I've got a British khaki colour and that's a bit greeny uh, browny green or if I um, do a mix up of FX2, FX55 and FX67 um, FX52 is flat earth FX55 is deck tan and FX67 is NATO green if I do equal parts it gives me a uh, browny green colour um, I'm not quite sure what to do um, I have looked up reference um, the, car the British car key I've got is this colour which is a uh, Browny green colour.
or I was going to have to do a mix. Um, so there you go, guys. You see a uh, 135 scale World War One tank, the Whippet from Emaha. Ladies, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.